All right, that's that time. Let's talk about open spaces again. Uh, for those who were here yesterday, um, you guys understand what we're doing, but anybody who's new uh, today, let's just uh, have a real brief run through of what open spaces is. It's, um, so let's talk about it. There's, there's three rules. Uh, whatever happens, happens. Whoever turns up is the right person, and when it's over, it's over. So this is supposed to be a very casual and, and exciting time where you can share knowledge and ask questions, bring up any topics that you, you're curious about. Um, yeah, and it's just a, a chance to uh, get together with your colleagues and, and share their knowledge. Uh, we have one other rule, the law of mobility, means, hey, if you're not getting something out of this, move on. There's, there's another group that's talking about something that you, there's a good chance you will get something out of or you can contribute back to everybody. Um, so, a couple ro uh, roles, I'm sorry. Uh, there's the convener. So, the person who suggests the topic, it's your responsibility to be at the open space to start your topic. Uh, ask your question. Get the dialogue going and let the conversation go from there. Uh, we have bumblebees feel free to move around. Like I said, if you know, you're not getting something out of it, move on. There's, uh, there's another group who, who, where you can help out or get something from. Um, there's the butterflies. Feel free to network now. Go out in the hallway, chat. This is, this is your time to uh, make friends and, and like minds. Uh, so we would like to also have a moderator. So when you go to an open space, elect somebody to kind of keep the, top, you know, the topic on track. Uh, you know, as, as always, conversations have the ability to kind of veer in different ways. Well, you're here for, for a topic. Try to keep it down to the same path, okay? Uh, and also, we have Slack channels that are open for each space. Um, I'd like somebody to hop in there and actually scribe what you guys are talking about. Uh, it's another way to share knowledge with people who can't make it to that space because you're at another space. Um, use your time wisely. <laughs> Uh, so we have a couple spaces. We have Apple II over on uh, stage left, Amiga, stage right, Atari 800 is stage, le uh, stage left up on the balcony, the Commodore 64 is up top over there, Tandy and TRS are in that front room upstairs, uh, both sides, both sides. All right, so this is the process. Uh, all day, you guys have been submitting ideas on the board. But we also want to give you the ability to, if you haven't had a chance to put something on the board, now's your time. Come on up and put a, put a topic on the board. Also, if you've put a topic on the board, come on up and announce it. Let's, uh, yeah, we can form a line right over at this microphone and uh, present your idea. After that, what we'll do is uh, we'll go through that, that process and then we'll take a, a short break. You guys can hit the washroom, we'll grab a drink. We'll take care of voting and get the, uh, or I'm sorry, not voting, uh, the room scheduled, and we'll present it on the board here. So, uh, yeah. all right, we've got enough line. Go I ahead. wrote down uh, supporting open source uh, software. Um, and, uh, you know, in corporate America, everybody wants to save money. Also, um, you know, I'll talk about share, increasing shareholder value. But um, the third thing the leaders talk about is mitigating risks. Bring, you know, getting rid of, you know, licensed software and then bringing in open source, you know, brings lots of risk. And how do you, what I want to know from you guys is like, how do you bring that conversation and how do you talk to your leaders um, about bringing in open source softwares and how do you talk to them about, you know, support? Not every uh, open source applications are supported. Um, by some you know, body, but how, how do you support? How do you, you know, form a support infrastructure or support environment around open source technologies? Thank you. All right. Um, I'd like to talk about the improvement Kata. Um, a couple months ago, I was at DevOps Days Detroit, and Mike Rother, who's the author of uh, Toyota Kata, uh, came and spoke. But he also did a workshop called um, well, the improvement kata, kata in the classroom. And uh, we went through that. It was very interesting. It's the principles behind Kanban. So um, he said the best way to learn about this is to teach it. So I got all the stuff all ready to go. 
Um, uh, we did it last week in Madison. It was, it was a good learning experience for me. So uh, come join me. Let's learn together. And I promise you, it'll be the funnest of the sessions, OK? <laughs> right. All right, I'm going to screech into the echo chamber a bit, so please don't throw things at me. Uh, in a lot of these talks, and people have mentioned it, and I'm sure we all know it, we all have silos. All the businesses have silos. And they evolve for a reason. So I want to talk about, you know, we always say we need to tear down the silos, but is that correct? Should we be tearing down the silos, or should we be acknowledging what's good about them and coupling them to break what's bad instead? Uh, so I propose DevOps Book Club. Um, really, it's just a space to share re uh, resources. It doesn't necessarily have to be books. It can be talks or articles or anything you've come across that's kind of um, improved your understanding of DevOps. Uh, I was a part of one of these open spaces. Uh, it was more focused on books at, a, at another DevOps Days event, and I found it really useful. Um, I, in the time since, I've actually read a lot of the books that were uh, uh, recommended uh, in that space two years ago, and I found my um, understanding of not only DevOps, but all the other things that DevOps pulls from has greatly increased my um, understanding of not just my role, but everybody else's role uh, you know, within the organization, not just within IT. Stop it feed, feeding back. Um, I proposed um, cloud specific or cloud agnostic. Um, the idea being when does it make sense to um, use specific tools for particular cloud providers versus um, making things more generic so you can handle the case where they say, well, you know, you're in AWS now, but actually perhaps we're going to go to Azure. I put up, um, are you a DevOps engineer? It was kind of driven by Aaron's talk earlier as well. But the, I guess my idea is, you know, is there, a, is there a, such a, a job title right now? And if there isn't, then what makes up the skill sets? And how is that kind of being defined within your company, in your space of, what, what, you know, what is a DevOps engineer? Hey, um, I'd like to talk about DevOps in small business and startups. So I work at a small company that has eight employees only. Four of them are like software developers. And so we face a lot of challenges with uh, maybe deploying into infrastructure that isn't our own, like we don't own it or manage it. Um, and you know, each project that we handle is a little bit different. So um, DevOps has its own unique challenges for us. So if you'd be interested in talking about that and how you have coped with it in your small business or startup, let us know. Uh, I'd like to have an open space for Ignite karaoke practice. Uh, <laughs> no microphones, just a bunch of people standing around the television and just like each take one slide and say a just really, really short and fewer people. Uh, I propose the uh, the one for uh, card games because uh, I guess one of the the sponsors covering my meds has a cool swag of a deck of cards. Uh, I've actually I travel with a card game uh, for any of the Wisconsinites out there. Uh, it's called Sheep's Head. I've got a rule sheet, so if you've never played it before, you can totally play it. It's a lot of fun. Um, and then if it doesn't end up on there, I'll propose one for hiring practices. So. If your company is already doing something, wants to share your story, I can share a story about how Dean Simple uh, took on an apprentice at one point um, and kind of how we changed our hiring practices. Um, if not, then let's talk about how you can reach out to like Girl Develop It uh, to hire some of their folks. I'd like to talk about height discrimination in the workplace. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, <laughs> Um, I'd like to. <laughs> that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah, I'd like to talk about uh, organizations that are not really keen on DevOps or DevOps ideas, tools, sets, anything of that nature, and then how you can uh, grassroots or Black Ops or uh, what's the other one? Stealth. Stealth. Yeah. 
how you can, yeah, how you can get that done and solve a real problem and then use that to convince the execs that that was a good idea and here's how we make that problem solved even better or smoother. A lot of times when we talk about DevOps tools and practices, a lot of them have open source or Linux flavors to them. I'd like to talk about the guys who are siloed into Windows environments and are doing their development on .NET and how we can best effectively use DevOps on the Windows side of the house because that doesn't seem to get as much love as the open source and the Linux stuff. Open mic night. <laughs> I'll be here a while, seriously. Um, I put two things on the board, and I just wanted to throw out for the card games. Anybody likes to play how, uh, sorry. Are you a werewolf? We've got at least two people that want to play. So the two things I put on the board were one, uh, ITIL or ITSM versus DevOps. So I sense that sometimes there's a tension between those two philosophies or practices. But other people seem to be of the opinion that they get along, so friends or enemies. Is it a turtle versus a cat or two kitties cuddling together? We could talk about that or not. And the other one was around um, workspaces. So I put up workspaces yesterday, but I didn't defend it. Um, it's about the concept of the low-walled, open space, small cubicle environments that seem to be popular in these days and trying to focus and get your work done or how you can kind of take control of creating those spaces as an Agile team and be empowered to do that or not. Thanks. Are we just going to keep holding this up high? All right. Um, so I've got a couple up there. One of them, um, I'm, I would like to restart our meetup in Cincinnati before we go all the way out to a, uh, creating a DevOps days. Um, so I put one up there for meetups just generically. So if anybody is interested in um, learning about meetups and uh, we have a meetup expert, I would love to add that to the group because I'm not. Um, the other one is I'd like to do a, a, a post-incident review of my um, Ignite. So um, that will also require a facilitator. So if anybody's really good at it and wants to experience a PIR um, or wants to learn more about the Ignites, then that might be a good place to kind of learn about them and see a post-incident review. Wonderful. All right, so um, is there anybody else who has, who has an idea or a topic they want to bring up who has not posted anything yet? All right, well then, uh, let's go ahead and get started voting here. Would you read them off? Yep. All right, um, DevOps and small business and startups. Show of hands. Really? Okay. Challenges faced in transitioning to DevOps. Supporting open source products. Are you a DevOps engineer? Okay. DevOps training opportunities for infrastructure employees. Ignite talks. Uh, giving an ignite and the review for Michael. Anybody? Okay. Improvement kata. Please vote for this. <laughs> Two. DevOps versus ITIL. Friends, enemies, or frenemies? <laughs> to the last part I may have added. 
DevOps advantages and disadvantages. Okay. Starting or joining a meetup. I'm voting on this one, of course. One, two. Okay. Book club. Frustration with open cloud, distracting works, what? Oh, open, open, okay, open work environment versus um, uh, noise, workspaces, and stuff. Six, yeah. Oops. Karaoke. You got four? DevOps in a Windows and .NET shop. I told you we should get Ashley back out here. Seventeen. Okay. Eighteen. Thank you. That helps. Success and horror. Uh, success and failures. Who wants to talk about fun stuff like that? Successes and failures. Anybody? Okay. Should silos be broken or coupled? Yeah, that is. Get count. Good enough. Laptop to production and list of tools. You guys don't run production on a laptop? What's the worst that could happen? Yeah. Isn't that called Docker? I mean, yeah. Hiring practices. Are you counting? DevOps via grassroots versus skunk works versus black ops and getting executive buy in. Teaching and learning, DevOps tools, concepts, and skills. Kind of de uh, teaching and learning, DevOps tools, concepts, and skills. Yeah. Yep. Cloud specific or cloud agnostic? Cloud specific or agnostic? Is that like multi-cloud? Who put that card up? Uh, okay. Do you cloud and vendor lock-in? Can I recast it to that? Okay. Hmm? Okay. Good. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I added one. Uh, how to collaborate with on-prem infrastructure team from your development side. It's kind of call that silos. I'm going to dedupe that down to silos. Yeah. Card games. One. Oh, you're going to Nine. Okay. All right, guys, give us a few minutes to put this together, and we'll get going again. Thanks.